Because we were in Trinidad together. You have been a blessing. See, oh, you have been a blessing whether you knew it about it or not. You are blessed because of the ministry's willingness to say yes to the Great Commission. And today we have a unique opportunity to welcome our only in-house missionary that, that, that was birthed and, and, and came out of this ministry, came out of this church, went with this church's blessing. And many of you have, so, have sowed, supported in prayer and in and, and, and sowing of seed and, and helping to, to bless that ministry. Many of you, how many of you have, have traveled to Romania with Pastor Roy? Let me see some hands. Look around the room just for a second. Yeah, yeah. So many of you guys have, have traveled in this room. And, and, and I had the, the, the really unique opportunity to go um, not that many years ago, but it was, it was, it, it's, it's been a while now, I think. Because I was the first American pastor to go and visit with Pastor Roy in Romania. And, and I, I got to be there to see it in the beginning. And I got to see his heart, his willingness to do this, fulfill the Great Commission. Man didn't speak Romanian, now he does. <laughs> Man had never been a missionary in his life, now he is. And there has been hundreds and thousands of people that have heard the gospel, have heard the teaching of his word, they have felt the love of this man in that, not only Romania, but even surrounding countries. In case you realize it or not, UK, Ukraine borders a portion of Romania. You know that, right? In fact, where those 12 soldiers were killed on that little island, bombed by that warship, it was just right off the coast of Romania. Very, very, very close. So I don't think it's by happenstance today that you and I have a chance, fresh and new, to hear about the mission field of Romania and beyond those borders. And to hear about the mission and, and, the, and the vision that God has for Roy and Melania. And for you and I for being a part of that and connecting to that vision. I believe that God's going to do some tremendous things. Would you put your hands together and welcome the man of God, Pastor Roy Olson. He used to get up here a lot quicker. <laughs> Clock's ticking, brother. It's ticking. Got it. Watch the cords. Yep. Don't fall in that hole right there. Watch out. It's a lot of cords up here. You don't know. It is actually a trip hazard up here. And nobody wants to fall down when you're live on Facebook. Come on. <laughs> Pastor Roy, here you go. Let's welcome the man of God one more time. Hey, Schnookums got something to say. Good morning. It's great pleasure, pleasure to be with you in this morning for worship to the same God. We appreciate all your sacrifice, what to do for Romania or beyond, and we love you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Okay, my name is Roy. I'm your friend. I'm 80 years old, and you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Moses, when he was 80 years old, he saw the burning bush. I'm looking for the burning bush, and I heard it this morning. Okay. Uh, they're going to put that PowerPoint up, but in the meantime, you got one of these cards ask you to pick it up, take a look at it. This is your tool. Pastor Wayne stole a lot of my fire this morning, but uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to it. Okay, this is your tool. This is the question you ask. Read this with me, please. If you were to die today, do you know you would go to heaven? Just ask people that question. Just ask them that question. I ask people in Walmart, in um, uh, 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 Ruby to the Friday, uh, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and the answer you get is, uh, if you would have, I, I hope so. Uh, I'm trying, uh, or not a chance, or oh, yeah, got it. Like Pastor Ring said, I'm saved. Well, then you turn it over. 
And you see, there are five points there. It's called exegeting Scripture. You take it apart, and you take it. And Pastor Wayne just just uh, did it. For God so loved people. God loved you. He doesn't hate you. He loves you. He's not trying to get even you and punish you for what you used to do or what you did yesterday. He loved you. Crazy about you. Number two, he showed his love by giving his only son. That whoever does one thing, not five things, not four things, not three things, not... Help me now. Two things. Just one thing. If he can do that one thing, two things happen. You will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so I asked him, I said, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Not around here. Most people do. What does it mean to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? It means you believe he's the son of God. You believe that he died for sins, mine and yours, and that he rose again from the dead. If you do those two things, you're a believer. You're a believer. Take the mysticism out of it. You're a, a believer. Change my voice. Yes, give it to them, dear saints. This is your tool. <clears throat> and and, and uh, if, if, if they want to keep this, let them keep it. I got more. Okay, I'm looking for my PowerPoint. Has it come up yet? <clears throat> click it, click it. I'm going to click it, thank you. There we go. Okay. <laughs> There's your pastor. Yes, he was in Poland. We've been in Poland, the Czech Republic, Germany, France, Serbia, Rabahando, Kobor, Babara, Fakachando, Korobondo, out of the brokenness of my life at 60 years of age. Nobody wants to. <laughs> now the take no. I got there at 60 years of age I didn't want to sit on a beach sipping lemonade I had fire in the belly just because there's snow on the roof don't mean there ain't no fire in the belly as they say and so we're moving right along here let's see now This thing ain't working. Okay, there we are. Okay, there's the there's the uh, dynamic family, and I just want to show. I think you're going to have to change this for me because this clicker ain't working. Okay, there he is. You know, if you want people to come into the church, they're going to come on with tattoos on their arm, on their face, like Tyson. You know, you got you got to welcome them. I talked about Tanya in the church that I pastored. She came down to Center Isle. She came from Moscow, uh, uh, Moscow, Putin land. And her skirt was so short that she almost had just had a belt on. <laughs> she walked down that center island, people turned. I looked too. <laughs> and this was a happening. And you know, people didn't talk to her about the length of her skirt. They wrapped her in the love of Jesus Christ. And Tanya kept coming, and boy, she had her own tailor, because every week it seemed her skirt got about 10 inches longer, because God can do things. All we do is do what he did, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, every time I do this, please uh, turn it to the next slide. Okay, so here's the Apavia story in the early years. We're moving quick here, please. Okay, we bought this in 2004 for $6,000. Out of my own money, I was an AG pastor, and I took my retirement out so I could buy this place. 
and I was younger then. I don't forget the thinners part there. And uh, yeah, you know, we had to break down some walls, do some repairs, rewire the whole place, put in new ceilings. Uh, this little guy would put him on a bolson's chair. And uh, we sent him down the well. He cleaned the walls of the well and pumped all the water out. And all the bottles of soda I put in the well so it would chill out were on the bottom. I made this bed. I was single again. But I made a king-size bed in faith. <laughs> yeah, we Norwegians, you know. And I was 65 years of age by this time. This is the heating system. You build a fire in that uh, little uh, place down here, here, and the, the heat goes up in serpentine fashion, heats that block, and that'll keep you warm for the night. Okay. That's what happens when you buy an old used car, but that's what I could get at that time. This is our workers. We're moving fast here, please. <clears throat> You've got to build relationships. You don't go into another community and try to make them do things the way you do them. You fit in. And there is my, uh, my priest. You see him on the side there. We, we, we pray together. We have meals together. We talk about Jesus together. There's a chief of police and our mayor who attends most of our conferences. Let's go quickly here through the conferences. Uh, Bible school theological seminary. Some of those kids are now pastors of churches. A conference on the road. Oh, what a joy, you know, to, to preach in the juvenile home. Reform school for boys. I love it, you know. Oh, it was wonderful. Yes. Okay, next please. There, there's another group ministering in Poland. Okay. So, Angela calls me. She says, I'm coming. Angela's a woman. Women are not allowed to preach in Romania. You know, they're not even allowed to go on the platform. Angela's black. Angela's drop-dead gorgeous. What was I going to do with Angela? So I got the women together. It's okay for women to preach to women. Boy, she was so good. She was so filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire and with passion that the, the, the brothers heard what was going on. And they called the pastor and said, yeah, can we go to her? Well, very soon the pastor was there with a group of men. There you go. Another pastor's conference. You know, and here I, I appeal to the men. Come on, guys. Can you accept Jesus? Will you accept Jesus? Can you accept Jesus? They, flood, they flocked to the front. And when the women saw their men going forward to accept Jesus, they raised their hands in praise. Hallelujah. 72 young people in a winter youth conference we put on there. Okay. Now, then we do some camps here. This is the boys' dorm. We 35 to 40. I tell you, I had a vision some years ago. And I saw some military people on the other side of the river, and they wanted to come over to us. And they couldn't because of the river, but they went north where they could cross over and they came down to us. And we were hosting military people from the north to help them and sustain them so they will be refreshed should they go back to the battle. And as Pastor Wayne was preaching, I was seeing it all over again as I saw there that I never dreamed it would be the Ukraine. But we don't know. We have place for a hundred, over a hundred people at Apavia. There's a girl's dorm, 35 soldiers could be there. Ukrainian military could be there. We can feed them. You know, the Lord put on my heart to have provisions. A lot of rice, a lot of beans, a lot of canned goods and so on and take care of these guys. I don't know if it'll happen, but it could be. There's our sports field. Oh, the little princess commanded my attention. Uh, go back again, please. I want to talk about the princess. You know, and there's something wrong with the camera because it made me look wider than I really am. 
<laughs> but I put it up there anyway. And, it, you know, I love being a missionary. You know, no pastor should ever feel threatened uh, uh, by me because I don't want a pastor again. Been there, done that, got the T-shirt, ain't going back. You know, I got out of the pond of the four walls of a church and I got into the ocean, going into all the world and preached this gospel. And, and <laughs> hallelujah. Continue, please. Yes, this group came from this church. Maybe some of your relatives or people that you know are there. Pastor Thurman is there. We deal with orphans very often. We don't make a big splash about it, but we work very closely with a Christian orphanage near us. And sometimes they come over for a week and they stay at Apavia. And thank God. Okay, construction. There was a first team that came out. You'll see a picture, a picture in the lobby about that. Praise the Lord on high, please. Hey, Tom, where are you? We need you. And uh, nailing for Jesus, there's our electrician man. This team came over just a few years ago and built a new conference center. And uh, so the new tabernacle, <clears throat> pastor came over, he says, I'll, I'll pay for uh, 30, 40 kids, 40 kids. I'll pay for everything for soup to nuts. That's about $3,000 right there. <clears throat> so when he saw the kids' response to the preaching of the gospel, uh, the, the move of the Spirit of God upon these kids, he said, next year I want 80 kids. Without thinking, I said, yeah, let's do it. I didn't have any place for 80 kids at that time. But I said, we need a new building. Uh, and so I put one post in faith, because I didn't have the resources for the whole thing. But I had resources for one. Some of you guys, you know, you got to put a post in the ground. Don't wait for everything, all your ducks in a row. Do what you can with what you've got. Just a suggestion. My other suggestion is don't die until you're dead. You know, get up, spit, rock the boat, do something, but don't just die. I mean, I'm 80 years of age. What's your excuse? <laughs> and so step by step, you know, pretty soon we have the skeleton and the, the architectural um, support there. Uh, I learned how to do it on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. I'm a watchman in the night. I'm the keeper of a light. For the wanderers returning, I must keep my home fires burning. I'm a watchman. I'm a watchman in the night. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody ever asks me to sing, but it was free, so I did it anyway. Okay. The house was full. Oh, if you could be there and see, dear saints, we're on the cutting edge of evangelism. We're on the on the uh, on, uh, we're, we're on the battlefront. There, there, there's a line that was drawn through the ages, and on one side was the forces of evil. On the other side, the Glorious cross of Jesus Christ there. And the battle is still raging within and without. Somebody said, are you afraid to go back? Well, I have a Bible verse that deals with that. It's called, though I walk through the valley of the Ukraine and Vladimir Putin, yet I will fear no evil. <laughs> Why, for thou art with me, I will not fear. So the place was full. God was moving inside, and this young lady, this tall, blonde gal, my sister, by the way, she was there with her husband, and, and this was not planned. This is not a photo op. I saw her standing at the entrance and the exit, and I could just see that she's standing and saying, no devil is going to get in here and disturb what God is doing. I'm standing in the gap. And no kid is going to get out of here until God is done with them. Hallelujah. 
Harambam barba barra bahasho korobom bolaravanda. It counts to be Pentecostal and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we have the Anna, the Anna Project right now. We know of widows who lived in abject poverty, Christian women. And we're not a nursing home, we're not an assisted living, but we are a place where um, viable widows can come and we, this year we built the new bathrooms, and this is uh, the equipment for the new um, uh, small apartment that we're making for uh, those who God sends us this way, please, next. <clears throat> and so this, you remember Thea and Donald Spitz? Well, they've been supporting us um, wonderfully for over the years. And dear saints, you know, when we're out of sight, let it not be out of mind. You know, you can send something to, to uh, Appavia or Royals and, you know, anything like that. Go through the church books and we'll get it. They send us every dime that you get. They don't take a portion for overhead, you know. And um, so anyway, that's, uh, we bought that property. Oh, that property was for sale for $18,000 euros. We went to negotiate. They changed the price to 50,000 euros. You got to be willing to walk out. I walked out. Big Brother, the hard negotiator, went to heaven, we hope. And, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, his uh, younger brother and widow came to us and said, you're still interested in that property? I said, yes, for the right price. She says, well, what do you offer? <laughs> I said, 13,000 euros. I figured start low, you know. Well, she got up came over, shook my hand, and say, I accept. So there you go. God is a miracle-working God, and here is that conference center right now inside and uh, filled with people. Uh, uh, move on, please. These are the countries to which we've been. God has done exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And um, I, I am not sufficient. We rely on uh, visiting pastors like your pastor, and uh, they do the ministry, and the, the ministry is just growing and expanding. But uh, uh, we're very grateful. So the future is bright, dear saints. Continue, please. And so we have plans for this new pavilion to enclose it and make a chapel or something out of it. That old house, I don't know what to do with it, but it's ours. And we now own four and a half acres. The yellow, um, the arrow is where now the new bathrooms are. The yellow is the first widow's room. The two red ones are the ones that we plan to build this year. And uh, you see how much it would cost each. We had to change the roof so we wouldn't ruin what we're doing inside. Thousands of youth and children over these last 20 years, hundreds of pastors and leaders, and we don't know how many have come to the Lord Jesus Christ, have been renewed in their faith, have been, received the call of God and responded, but we know that God is working. Hallelujah. And because, because he lives... The best is yet to come. Amen. So thank you for your prayers, your gifts, your sacrifices. Thank you. And uh, there I am at five years of age. That's when I got the call to be a missionary, believe it or not. And, of course, now I'm even better looking. I even have my red hanky right there. That's to celebrate 80 years. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Amen.